Deconstruction is one of the most hot button issues in Christianity today. Whether it's ex-evangelical or deconstructionist, a lot of these people that are breaking down the foundations of their faith roam on to social media and share their perspectives about their new perspectives about Christianity, Jesus, and the Bible. In today's video, I'm going to react to one of these kind of deconstructionist Christians and respond to a video that I think is pretty common, like the accusations that she's sharing are pretty common. Maybe you have heard these in your own life for people that are deconstructing, or maybe you've had these questions yourself regardless let's dive into it yeah a big contributing factor to why i stopped wanting to worship the biblical god is because i did not like the idea of him torturing or even annihilating those that i loved and cared about that simply didn't believe in him i had plenty of non-christian friends that i considered to be genuinely good people but because they didn't believe in god i had to believe that they were evil and that they were going to be justly tortured for all of eternity. Okay, let's talk about this because there's lots of misconceptions about hell out there. And it sounds like she has some, even while she was, you know, she considered herself to be a Christian, she had some misconceptions about it as well. She says that she understood her friends to be pretty much good people, right? And so why would they go to hell? Well, it actually gets to the core foundation of like who we are as people. Are we intrinsically good? Are we intrinsically evil? Uh, you know, according to the Bible, if we're going to go with the Bible here, if we're going to call ourselves a Christian, then we got to go with what the word of God says. And we say, okay, well, the Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God, that we're all dead in our trespasses and sins. And you might even look at that and say, okay, well, I can understand that we've sinned. And so there might be some punishment that is due, but really like hell for all of eternity, that's pretty extreme. A lot of people have that perspective. And so this analogy might give you some help on this. So, you know, if I were to lie to my little brother, nothing would happen really. Like he's my little brother. I can lie to him and like it's bad you know I did a bad thing but like ultimately the consequences of, of that aren't going to be that extreme if I lie to my parent let's say I was a little bit younger and I was still like a teenager and I lied to my parent the consequences of that would be more severe I might get grounded or some of my privileges might be taken away um, if I were to lie to a cop you know a police officer man the, the the consequences of that scenario would definitely be heightened quite a bit more if I were to lie to a judge that would be perjury and I would be sent to jail so the the lie didn't change. It was a lie each time, but who I committed the act against did change. So when you commit an act against God, who is completely holy, infinitely holy, right? Something super small to us might seem insignificant. To God, it is an infinite offense, and thus the punishment is eternity in hell. She says how she didn't want to see them as evil and deserving of hell. Well, we need to understand that we are not above them, right? Like, it's not like we're as Christians saying, oh, they're so evil, and why are they so bad? Bad and why I'm, you know, I'm so good and I'm going to heaven because I'm a nice guy. It's like, that's not a biblical or Christian perspective. It's that we have all sinned and all fallen short of the glory of God. And it is only by God's grace that I'm saved, right? It's like I'm a beggar that's looking for bread that, and I've found that bread and now we're called as Christians to share that good news. It's not like God has hung us out to dry here. He's given us a path out of this judgment that we rightfully deserve through Jesus' sacrifice. That's the whole point of the gospel. That's the whole point of Christianity. And when you're young, you just accept this. But as you get older and you start grappling with your own morality, you start to wonder, how this is just and i was yeah, grappling with your own morality L listen how she she puts that <laughs> yes you either are stuck with god's objective morality or you're you're subjected with your own morality what's the alternative here well am i the judge of god like i'm gonna judge god for the way that he conducts himself because it doesn't fit in my morality look where am i getting morality from if i'm just like stardust bumping into stardust if i'm just um you know an evolved animal and I have no intrinsic dignity or worth, where am I getting that standard of right and wrong and morality if I'm denying God's standard? See, if we're going to cling to the Ten Commandments or, you know, what Jesus said is like, oh, good moral teaching, then we need to embrace all of it. And when God says, you know what, you're guilty before me and you're deserving of this, then we got to take him at his word, regardless of if it doesn't fit into our morality. Because our morality is flawed. It changes every day. Look at the, uh, the world's morality and how it shifted over time. It's flawed. We say you come to a crossroad where you have to either choose your belief 
or choose your empathy. You have to get choose your belief or choose your empathy. That's such an interesting way to put it because look, it's not about um, you can feel bad for for people that are like, you know, not Christians and they're going to go to hell, right? Like, and that that's a scary thought. That's like, a, oh man, like I, I don't want that, right? Because you want them to be saved. You want them to come to know Jesus and you can have that feeling. But the, the, the way you deal with that is not, oh, you know what? Like maybe they're not going to go to hell. Maybe they're just, they're cool. Like, you know, they're pretty good people. Like, okay, I'm not even going to worry about it anymore. And that makes me feel better. And, you know, I can feel like empathy towards them. So I don't, you know, I want to just like let, let it go and let the truth go. No, it's like, well, no, we're, we got to pursue truth regardless of how it makes us feel. So it's not about choosing your belief or choosing empathy. It's about choosing truth or choosing to make ourselves feel better by denying what is true. Give one up for the other. And I just could not give up my empathy to maintain my belief that my friends that didn't give believe deserved eternal punishment. And it hurts that my own family would worship and praise a God that they believe will do the same to me. Ultimately, it's God who needs to transform this woman's heart to surrender her own perspective and her own morality uh, to God. Because right now she is judging God. She she's put, placed herself as the judge of God saying, look, God, I don't think your justice is truly just. I don't think your goodness is truly good. I don't think your love is truly loving. I think my definitions of what love and truth and justice are, are more valid. And so she's putting herself on this kind of high horse of saying, I need to embody this empathy for all these people. And I can't, you know, coexist with this belief that God would send people to hell because that's just so unempathetic and, and that kind of thing. Well, hey, look, if that's the truth, is that the is that the truth? That's the real question. It might feel make us feel uncomfortable. It make us may make us feel sad that people are going to hell. But what does that drive us to? Does it drive us into denial and accusing God of not being good, or does it drive us into action and actually living out His commands on this earth to be a witness? for him. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. You can help support my ministry on Patreon. Um, link in description and support me on a monthly basis. It would be a huge blessing. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. God bless.